to start, let's bring in a point. So let's go here to construct point. And with construct point, what it does is it gives us this component. It gives us X, Y, Z to move a point around. And this is how you create a parametric point. We can always create one here. Um, and this way you don't have to like insert a point when you first start the project. So now let's go to point component. And the reason why I do this is because if I want to set one point, I can plug this one in and then unplug it, um, holding down control to then set one point and then set a different point. Next, we'll go to a circle. And with the circle, we'll give it a radius. So 45. Now the next thing is we'll want to create a point along here. Now, there's different ways of doing that. We can do point on curve. The other way I do it is end point. And this gives us two points at the start and end. And since the start and end are the same, we're just going to use one of these. So we'll go here to a line component. And we'll plug in the start point to the other start point as the end one. And this gives us this line segment. With this line segment, let's create the midpoint. So we'll go to a midpoint component. And if you don't display it this way, go to display and make sure that you have draw icons, fancy wires, and drawful names all on. Now we'll go to this midpoint and we'll go to move. And we're going to move this not up, but in the y direction so positive y so unit y and i'll bring in a slider and the reason why i usually do 15 is because it's more than 10 and when you have more than 10 it will give you from 0 to 100 if i were to pick something like 9 or 10 it only goes from 0 to 10 and this gives me the perfect uh, kind of range of numbers that i can use for this now I can disable that midpoint. I don't need it and I've replaced it by moving it using this component. Now let's go ahead and take this and connect the first, middle, and last. Now um, there's different ways of doing this one. So I'll, for this time, I'll use an interpolated curve, which means that every point that it goes through, it, the line will interpolate between those points. We'll start with this point, then we'll start the, we'll go to holding down shift, doing the point here that we moved, and then the start point. So holding down shift, I plug those in in order. And now, as you can see, we have this thing to play with. Now we can also do, and sometimes it even looks a little bit cleaner, is taking those three arcs. And as you can see, um, we're going to be plugging them into the ABC here. So I'll disable the preview. And now let's do those uh, one at a time. Starting with point A, this one as point B, and this start point as point C. What's cool about this is this is going to be our segment that we're going to array, right? So like we can take, so there's different ways we can array this. I wanted to take this and rotate it around once. Let me show you here. We'll rotate this arc relative to this midpoint. And the angle will go to degrees and we'll go to like 5.500. This way we have a cool, like a good way to rotate that around. Now, obviously 360 would be all the way around, but this is what I want to show as a segment. 
where we can take this one and that one and loft it together. We'll take this one and holding down shift, plugging this one in. Now we have these two segments. Now we can use these segments and kind of project them up. Um, so the next portion is going to be to create that geometry that we're going to project onto and then take this. So let's take this loft. And I wanted to rotate this loft. Relative to start point. And the angle is going to be more than one angle. So I'll go random points, a random number, range. Construct domain. And this will give us a range start and end. So we're going to start at one and end at 360. How many? This is the number. We'll say six. And the seed is the random numbers. So we'll go uh, five and start it at zero. Now we can use this random rotation and this angle, turn it into degrees. Now we have this random number of rotations here that we can kind of flip around and change. As you can see, we have a lot of play with some of this stuff. And the reason why I wanted to make it more of a random thing is now we can, of course, play around with some of these things. And I wanted to project that up into a structure that is more like a cone-like. That's what we'll be doing next. But this is ultimately the, the idea where we could rotate this around and then take this geometry and project it up. <clears throat> So for the next part, what we'll do is we'll take this point will be our starting point and we'll move it up. So it's going to move this point in unit Z. And let's give this one a larger number, like 150. Now we have the midpoint or the starting point. We have this point that's all the way out here. So let's connect those. Let's create a uh, nerves curve. Curve. Starting at third point. Going through this point and ending at this top point, holding down shift. This is a little bit too large, so we'll give it 100 less than that. Next thing is, let's create a line from this point to this point. The line starting this point and ending at the top point. And with these two, we can use revolution and use this line as the axis. Use this curve as our form. And now that we have this form and some of this geometry down here, we can then project or well, actually, there's a few cool things that we could do with this. Um, so let's try this out. Let's take this and we're going to extrude all of these in the Z direction. And actually, we are going to use the same value as the 100 Z.
and we're here it's showing that it's doing all of them except for the starting one one the hold down shift and add that one Now I'll disable the preview on this and I will then use the intersect command or inter intersect tab and go to physical B rep with B rep. Then we can plug this B rep where it intersects this B rep. And as you can see, we're getting something, but it's just definitely not working like, oh, that's fine. It's flat in here. Yeah, it's still not working. So let's use. Let's get the edges. You're at the edges. Sometimes uh, some of those components give us some issues. So let's go to endpoint. You're at edges. We'll plug this one in and this one and we'll use the project onto a BRA and we'll project these curves make sure that I flatten the input on that one make sure that it's just one long list of all of those and project it right onto the surface Oh, I don't know. It's I actually think that it's because it goes to a point. And since it goes to this point, it gives us issues. So let's move that point in the X direction. Right? So if this curve is the X and this is Y, we want to move this one in the X direction. So we'll move. this point and now rather than plugging in this point I'll hold down shift and plug in this one let's see if that works there you go so the reason why is because it was going to uh, exact point even if I just said one it would work um, and that's kind of what I was looking to do. So with this, we have a little bit more variability on some of those things. So let me move some of these around. trying to see what's it's trying to do here um, because what's happening is that it's going to I guess let's just create more of like a tutorial tutorial field at the thing here and even if we went over it would start taking in on some of the design that it doesn't do here at the bottom so that's some of the cool things that some of the things that we don't really can really visualize without using parametric design and so it's a little bit more form finding and design exploration this way. If we disable everything except for the last one, you see that we'll get some of this fun stuff. All right, so I hit a bit of a dead end on that little portion, but for now, we'll just take this um, as kind of the end of the tutorial here. I just wanted to show you how to create some of these um, different type of forms. And I have had a question to do something like this. Uh, what's different about this is that the rotation is using random rotations. Uh, this way you get like a random form by just using a different seed. 
and we can also play around a little bit with some of this uh, so we can get more variation if we increase that uh, and also change the domain start so if we change this to a different number we'll see that we also get some variation here um, there's more things that we can do like changing the curve type and things like that uh, but let me know if you have any questions or if you found this interesting um, I will have this in the script portion and I will upload the other scripts that I haven't so um, stay tuned for that thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time all right what I did at the end here was I created a relay and a series of rotations this way we also have the ability to just create something like this that is has more rotations that are um, around the same angle but we also have the ability to uh, disable that and then kind of plug this one in so let's actually do this one and we'll enable it right and this one gives us random rotations when this one gives us so I can actually have both of these in holding down shift and I'll disable or right click and click on enabled and that'll disable that so I'll have this um, ready for you and let me know if you have any more questions